Welcome to my first annual holiday poem. Uh, this one's called The Feast. The annual feast has been called off. It was announced on the news at 7. Eh, nobody's really up for it this year. And that was the only reason given. Besides, we'll have more time to sit around and mope and just think of all the money we'll save on gasoline and soap. And people said, you know, yeah, that's true. There's, there's been a spread of the blues. I've heard the mayor's four chins sit right down on his shoes. And our neighbor, Brett, frets his partner, Chet, sweats regrets, and, and Chet gets upset and bets Brett will quit his fits and snits, but when and what can he do? Maybe we can have a feast again next year. We'll, we'll, we'll just see what it brings. But for now, hmm, we've got no appetite for such things. Then a voice in the air, well, I for one can tell you exactly what we can do. And there stood a fellow with a white apron on, brandishing a spoon like a magic wand. For those of you in the unknow of who I'm in, I'm the chef that adds the something to the something that brings you back again. I create the flavors that make you think of home or conjures destinations like Sioux Falls or Rome, or fast friends and family, lovers old and new, and leaves you quite sated with the taste of gratitude. Everyone exchanged glances. What did he say? A chef has arrived to save the day? Yes, said the chef. And remember, you cannot chew the fat if there's no fat for chewing. So if it's not in the what, it must be what's in the doing. So instead of a feast of what we have not, let's prepare to prepare what we've already got. And then a small voice said, but all we got is problems. Well, then instead of fruit, meats, and pies, bring all your suffering. We'll see how that fries. Your pain and your loss, your grief and your sorrow, and meet me on the square on the morrow. And that's what they did. They brought in concerns of all shapes and shades. An old man even brought in a name he was called in third grade. And then the chef cried out, on ricer, on dicer, on slicer and mixins, on thrasher, on masher, on spicer and fixins. Pickled and poached, roasted and roast, dipped in salt water and delicately toasted in front of everyone, before their eyes, voila, a perfectly prepared faux pot pa -pa pie. Ooh, said the crowd. Then a man took his nightmares that he wrestled and crushed them with a mortar and pestle. And a lady made a cake she cooked out of a mistake she once mistook. A boy found a way and made lemons out of lemonade. Another took shaved not very nice and made a sorbet. Angry Billy Brooks happily cooked a passive aggressive etouffee. In this case, said the chef, the bitter the better, the better the better, the meaner the demeanor, the cleaner the platter. A tear here, a care there, sprinkle plop, brining the pining and whining for fine dining. The table was all set, servings plated. Behold, the village looked upon what they created. There were bites of frights. There were nibbles of quibbles. There were plates of hates and thimbles of drivel. There were distraught dogs, dread pudding. There was disheveled eggs, blue cheese depressing, flinch fries, upside down cake. There were lament juleps, wince meat pies, awful waffles, scorned beef hash, sour day pancakes, angers and mash, watermelon collie, there's bitchin' catchatory and fricassee of misery. Oh, if you please, said an old cantankerous cuss, would you pass those woe potatoes down to us? Young Dan Thorne shared a sympathetic ear of forlorn corn. Together with old Keith, they cleaned every kernel, for each was missing different teeth. And with every bite bit, every lick licked, there wasn't a bone left to pick. Things that had haunted. Things they had feared were gone. They all but disappeared. Except for a little piece of angst that ended up in Grandpa's beard, which fell out and before it hit the ground was eaten by a beset hound. Turns out a mountain of problems after scale plucked and clean don't really amount to as much as a hill of beans. And when they were all sated, they realized now there was a new family they had created. And all agreed this was the best and with every plateful, they had found themselves eternally grateful. Raising a glass, the chef said, the secret of gratitude, unlike a grudge, is it's already there. It just needs a small nudge. 
more pots were panned and scrubbed, goodbyes said, <laughs> hugs and kisses, each off to bed. On his way home, now it was dark on the road, the mayor tripped and stubbed his big toe. I won't say what he said, because it's a bit obscene, but it's sure to be added to next year's cuisine. But he noticed when he looked down, number four chin was three feet off the ground. And that's the story. Nothing profound. Just the troubles that are shared troubles us less. And sorrows of others are somehow easier to digest. So start collecting your woes, cares, and fears. And we'll see you all at the feast next year. Thank you.